Pro Mike is excited about it. I'm excited about it. Um, uh, I'll be honest with you, I've had a lot of stuff to want to jump out of me. A lot of things that have been racing my mind. I'm say me, to say you need to get out. Um, uh, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be able to deliver God's word once again. The opportunity just to come before my brothers and sisters and have my pastor stand behind me and say, I know I'm here right now, but I trust you with my congregation. It's, it's really a blessing in my life. Um, uh, some of you probably have already seen the Facebook post I uh, uh, posted earlier today, mentioning my title. Uh, the title of mine is the Dear God. And, uh, you know, I mentioned all this stuff that I had built up inside of me, all these feelings that I had, all this stuff. And, you know, I've had this thought for the message for a while now, or at least the title, Dear God. And that's probably, at first came to life probably a couple months ago. But now it's a, it's a completely different thing. And something I want to mention that sometimes I think we just, we don't think about mentioning and letting people know is that, you know, yeah, we might be ministers or pastors or preachers or evangelists, but God has a word for everybody. It's not, we're, it's not we're exempt from God's word. Brother Mike mentions it all the time. You know, he still needs to be preached to. He still needs that from, whether it's from his pastor or visiting pastor when he's not traveling. God's word is God's word. And there's nothing there's no exceptions. There's no loopholes around that. Everybody is made for everybody. I mean, I'm just so grateful for, for his word. I'm a, but the problem is starting things. How do I start this message? How do I, how do I get things going? How do I get the wheels going? That's kind of where I want to start tonight. Um, uh, and when I, when I say this, I'm sure everybody here is going to agree with me. Um, uh, it's really hard to start things sometimes. Whether that's a new a new thing completely new to us, or whether, whether it's a new walk with God, or starting a walk with God, um, uh, it's really hard to continue and follow through on some things sometimes. Right. But it is extremely easy to quit, right. or walk away, or turn away, or just put something down. It's super easy, and there's a reason why it's so hard to start something. I mean, there's a reason why it's so hard to continue steadfastly, and follow through with things we're doing, and just keep a grasp on. And there's a reason why it's so easy to walk away. Um, uh, I just want to talk about praying for the message tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for gathering us here, Lord. Lord. Our brothers and sisters, God. Lord, it's your children, Lord. Lord, seeing these faces, Lord, it blesses my soul. It blesses you, Jesus. Lord, seeing people in your church, God, in your house, wrapped up in your atmosphere, Jesus, God. Lord, I want you to be here to, to, tonight, Jesus, Lord. Anoint the word, God. Anoint me, Jesus, Lord. Lord, I want to say exactly what you want me to say, not what I want to say, God. Take my flesh out of it. Take my ignorance out of it, Jesus, God. Speak through me today. Let these people hear your word. Let me, let, let, let me learn from it, God. Let them learn. Let them see that respond to you, Jesus, God. Because you are worth it. Because you are worth every bit that we give. Every energy we give to you, God. Every strength. Every thought that we have. Let it be geared towards your, your will, God. And what you have for us, Lord. In your name, amen. Like I said, dear God. And... I want to touch on just what I mentioned earlier, that it was a previous thought. And when you say dear God, it's pretty general. I mean, there's so many ways you can go. And the main way that it was focused towards me was what I felt was maybe a message just for me. But basically, a child talking to the father. And that goes into a different perspective of the father talking back to the child. That's how it was presented to me. And that touched me. It really meant a lot to me then. But like I said, it's such a different message to me now. Um, uh, I mentioned getting started. We have problems getting started sometimes. And if you didn't see that post on Facebook, what it was, my title was slide and I don't know we don't have a projector back here yet, but it was a piece of paper. And all I had on it was a dear God comma, like they were putting it right a letter. But it was blank. There was nothing else. And a lot of times, whether, I mean, honestly, nobody's really the rookies here. Um, I'm only three years into this, or four years now, I guess. So I'm probably the youngest out of most of us. Um, uh, so our starting days are almost kind of over. Everyone else here has at least, I don't know, 10 plus years of living for God, walking that walk, walking a spiritual walk, having a relationship with God. But there's still there's so many out there that haven't started yet. And we have folks just, we have a problem getting those wheels turning. Where do we go after dear God? What, what do we do after this? Or can we even get to the point where we get to say dear God? And on to the next, um, uh, following through. That's another thing that we have. It gets tough. 
So many things happen. We have things coming against us. We, we, so many troubles. We fear this. We fear that. And understanding that when you truly are walking with God in every aspect of your life, there is nothing to fear. That He's going to provide. And that brings me to my scripture for tonight. It's just one verse. And we're jumping in the middle of it here. But I'm, I promise you I'm going to give us context and fill in the blank spaces. But we're going to go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 and 5. I'll give you time to flip to it. No problem. What was it? First Kings 19, 5. Thank you. I was listening. Slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. Wait, sorry, I messed up, guys. It's four. <gasps> Chapter, or verse four, I'm sorry. I apologize. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. And I warned him. How many of us are actually at that point in our life? Maybe not necessarily asking God to, you know, end what we have, but begging for God to, to let us out of this, get us out of this. Right. Lord, we're struggling. I don't know what else to do. God, I want it to stop. Right. How many of us are at that point in our life where we're in a downhill slide with our faith, where we're lacking to just grasp God? Um, how many of us are just struggling with the daily, daily tasks? And trying to find God in circumstances that we seem we shouldn't be going through, but we are. How do we deal with it? What do we do? But I also want to fill in those pieces, give us context of what's really going on here. This is the story of Elijah. And um, right before he goes out, where we find him in uh, verse 4, he was uh, in Israel. Dealing with um, uh, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel and the uh, false idol Baal. And uh, basically... Israel at this time, the king and queen were worshiping this, this idol, Baal. And so were every, every, all the Israelites. And basically what it was was Elijah was trying to fight them, show them, okay, well, this is who God really is. You have your God, I have my God. This is who God really is. And we know how that goes. We know how the world is today comparing other things to any other religion. Trying to compare it to this God and this God and make it make sense for them. It's hard, and it's a conflict. That's what it is. It's what it more than likely will always will be. But they reach a point where they say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a, basically a competition. So you've got Elijah and some of his supporters, and then 450 Israelites, the, or the prophets of Baal. And they're, they're each going to make a, an offering for their God, and then Elijah's going to make an offering for God. And they're going to call down fire upon this offering. And whoever actually does it, that's who the real God is. So these, these prophets of Baal, I think it says from the earliest morning to noon or something like that, for a very long time, they're dancing, chanting, trying to call this fire down, and it never happens. And then you have Elijah. Rebuilds it on time. Prepares the sacrifice perfectly. And before he starts to call down this fire, he gets water and he soaks it. Puts a trench around it. They're basically saying, hey, there's no way I could light this on fire. There's no way anybody else could do it. And he starts praying and calling down the fire. And what does you know? Here comes the fire. But this is the same man that we just saw begging for to be basically put out of his misery. Asking God to end it, that I'm no better than my ancestors or my fathers. There's my other point. How many of us forget what God has done in our lives? How many of us have forgotten what miracles God literally did through us or put us a part of? Right. 
We don't remember that in a, in a time of fear. We don't remember when God killed us 20 years ago when we first started our journey. We don't remember the time that God raised us out of this darkness or gave us the money just to make it a few more days. And it was the exact amount. Which brings me right to where um, uh, Elijah uh, God sends an angel to Elijah when he, after he begs, right after he begs, to be killed. And he gives him food and water. And then sends him out for 40 days. And that food and water that the angel gave him lasted long enough for to last those 40 days. And he finds himself in a cave. And at this point in our lives, we, we think, okay, God, I'm looking for you. We're, I'm so low, I need something amazing, I need something miraculous that I can't miss. That there's no way I can miss. I need you to split the heavens, to move the mountains in my life. But that wasn't what Elijah found. Right. It was just a small whisper. That's right. Just a small whisper. Amen. Amen. And something small, so small that most of us may even miss it. Because right. we're, we're looking for something big, right? Because that's what God is. God is God. Amen. Put your expectations of Him aside. Put the things that you think He is aside. And find out who He really is. Search Him. Church in his work. But how many of us get so caught up in our daily lives, the hustle and bustle of this world, making everything, making all the ends meet, making sure all the bills are paid, making sure our kids are taken care of, the, covering everybody, that we, we also forget about ourselves and we put God on the side as well. And we miss those slight things that he's doing. See, I'll be honest. I didn't know what the tone or the setting was going to be for this message. I knew it was something that was meant for us, that we needed to hear in this moment. Sure. I can't lie to you. I might never say, God, take me out of this. But I'd be lying if I said that I'm never scared. Or I never forget what God has done in my life. Right. I can't say that. I understand. Honestly. Amen. And if we're going to do all the things we say, if we're going to be the things that we know we're called to be, that we're, we know that we want to be, we have to get rid of this the mindset that we have to please the world or we have to please our friends, our family. Stop trying to be what the world wants you to be and be what God has called you to be. Don't forget about the healings. Don't forget about the miracles. Don't forget about the test scans that came back negative when a week ago you, your body was filled with cancer. Don't forget about the small things. That small, still voice can be the difference for you still saying and sitting there saying, Dear God, and waiting for something to happen when you have no idea where to go. Mm -hmm. So, maybe you're, or we're trying to start something when really, we're past the starting stage. We don't we don't get to restart anymore. That's right. You're in the continuing stage. You're in the following through stage. Right. Just because you failed once doesn't mean you need to start it all over again and restart. Mm -hmm. You just need to find that small, still voice and see where he's calling you. Because that is exactly what happened to Elijah in that cave. When he heard the small, still voice and he listened, it gave him exactly where to go. It gave him and just, just a few moments before, when we're reading, he was wanting to die. And then here it is, 40 days later, and God's giving him directions. God's giving him, giving him guidance. He's talking to God. God. We have the opportunity to talk to God in prayer. We have an opportunity to see miracles still to this day, whether people believe in it or not. We come to church and we get to feel the atmosphere and the presence and the actual experience of God. And it is a blessing. That sometimes, yes, it is a small, still voice, but sometimes he's out of here. And you can see it. You can feel it. And there's no way you can deny it. Right. So there is no more time to sit in a pew and ignore it. There's no more time to let your burdens come in this place. And God, how you worship, or God, how you're going to live your life. Let God decide how you're going to live your life. Let him speak into it. Amen. Grasp him, and he'll grasp you back. He will cover you. He is the provider. He's exactly what you need at any moment. He is that good food. He is the good water that's going to last exactly until you need it, which is exactly when He wants you to have it. Trust in His timing in every circumstance. 
There is no fear of death. We have nothing to fear because we have God. It's shown in here time and time again that God is more powerful than death. He beat the fe death. He defeated it. There is nothing that can hold him down. There is no trouble that's troubling you on this place that can trouble you in heaven. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is that if we, we just learned about the end times and what's really going to happen. We learned about the, the goreness of it, the, the absolute horrified horrific of it. So if you, if you think it's bad now, can you only imagine what it will be? What I'm saying is, don't let the hard times you see now, the small things, because the message was sent to Elijah. I know I'm going kind of out of style here, but the reason why Elijah was fleeing was because Jezebel sent a message to him that you're going to die. I'm going to kill you, just like you did my, my people. Because he had him executed after um, God brought him to fire. He was running to that. And the ironicness of it is, he's running from a death threat and an axe God to kill him. Right. If you wanted to die, you could have just died. It's the same man that put fire on a, on a sacrifice, soaked it. He had enough faith to not only step, stand above and before 450 people that are nowhere near him, nowhere, no, that think completely differently. And he soaked an altar. It's enough just trying to get an altar started by calling to God when people don't believe. But soaking it and it's still lighting on fire. The faith that that took to stand there and know that my God is going to light this on fire. My God is going to show who he is. My God is real. And I'm going to show you here. Was the same person that fled away from the death. Don't forget who God really is. Amen. Amen. You might be a dear God. You might be halfway through your life. You might be halfway through your walk. Ask God where you are in those steps. If you're just now starting, you've got to start now. Amen. There is no more time to waste. There are more people than we can imagine that are still in that. That have even thought about starting. If we don't start here, we will never start out there. And that means they will never be start. If we don't Stop letting the small things in our lives that really aren't going to matter when it comes to eternity try to make us feel like we have to walk away or that it's easier to walk away. We know it's easy. Let me know how easy it is when your eternity is destined. When you're in hell. It's not going to be easy. All right. Don't forget but what if we're past the stage of wanting to leave? We're experiencing enough in this church. So, all, I don't know off the top of my head, 50 plus years in church? 50 plus years. You've been through a lot. We all know, right? But I, I don't believe there's any bit of you that forgets all the miracles that God's ever done to you because of one bad thing that happened, right? right. You, you testify about them all the time. That's what it is here. Dear God, thank you for what you've done. And you can list them out if you got to. This is in prayer. This is in writing it down in paper so you get to see it. Just having something to remind yourself what God has really done. Having it written down. Having it in your mind at all times. Being ready to talked about it, wherever you are. And this is not just in D-Wit. This is back at East End. This is in Whitehall. It, God is God. No matter if it's here, no matter if we're sending them there. Our goal is to get people in church. Our goal is to get people started. Right. Get past the dear God phase. Where they really reach the intimacy of God or a relationship with them. And it's, it is a rolling, work, rolling road. It gets hard. It gets rough. You're, you're out of whack. Your tires are out of line. You're all over the place sometimes. But having that little guideline remind you which, what he's done, not just in the Bible, but in your life personally, the things that you, he's done through you, the experiences that you got to share, the experiences that you experienced yourself, is a blessing. Don't forget to look for the small voice, no matter how hard it is.
hardships. No matter how lonely you feel, He's going to make a way. He's going to provide. Whether it's your way of provision that you want or not. I'm going to open up to, uh, to prayer. I know this is a different atmosphere than out in the sanctuary, but I don't believe there's no border um, that God is going to say, okay, I'm not going to do that. If you aren't even to start, Brother Yates and myself are here. If you're needing, if you're struggling, if you're the one that ran out in the in the in the unknown, if you're needing something to guide you back to that, I want you to encourage. I don't care who hears it. I don't care how quiet it is in this room. Your eternity is more important than being awkward. Right. It's more important than feeling uneasy because people may be looking at you. I want you. I want to encourage you. You can pray where you're at. You can come up here, and I'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. Whatever God has on, whatever God is grasping you for, I want you to grasp that tonight. I want us to respond. And if there is no response, that's that's okay. All right. I want you to let God lead you. 